So I don't want to. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, oh, fuck. Lord of mercy. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ah, yes, yes. Oh, we now are gay. Shubla dubla dub, chop 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 chop. You will never get away I don't want to. No, I don't want to. No. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Anthony Jordan again for Lifestyle on Ben. Today I'm in the hearth, hidden away in West London in the Stingray Studios, a place where many, many legendary artists have passed time and time again. And today we have no exception because I'm joined by a international superstar who doesn't need any introduction, but I, it's my job, so I have to introduce him. None other than Mr. George Knox. How are you today, sir? Greetings. Yeah, man. Happy to have you here, you know? Happy to be here. Well, I'm happy to be in front of you. I can't believe it, you know? Many, many, many a tunes on the radio that I've heard, and here I am, meeting yeah. the man himself. So yeah, tell us, what brings you to the UK today? Well, um, we had um, a show um, down there by... Oh, what's the name of it now? Um, Collindale. Collindale. And... Um, very nice show, was well attended and um, as you know um, I did my thing and it was um, well appreciated as always, you know, so it was good. Yes, yes, it was yourself and Bitty McLean I believe. Yes, definitely, yeah. Um, it was a well attended show as we said and great songs, we've been uh, sung songs from way back from the 70s right up to um, today and um, I'm telling you man, it was a bang, you know. Well, as I said, many classics, I can imagine the crowd were well, many sing-alongs I can imagine happened there that night. Definitely, definitely, definitely. They all enjoyed themselves. Okay, okay, brilliant. You say that it, many songs going back from the, the 70s, so it's a long, long story career as it were. <laughs> Not, well, you know, many tunes over those years. Yeah. What, what started, where did the passion kick off that you wanted to become a singer? Well, um, it definitely started off in the church, you know. Um, Came from a very religious background, you know. Um, I had to go to church from Sunday to next Sunday, you know. Um, so basically, that that's what it was. And um, started off, you know, singing in there and t until they put me on the choir. And um, I left there and took it to school, you know, concert and the talent show. And, and that was basically where it started off, you know. Um, Background, religious. Indeed, indeed. And yeah. it, would you say that's what's helped you inspire many, right, all of your songs? Yes, definitely. Um, um, what, what, what really brought me more and more um, a little bit closer to, to um, my roots, so to speak, was um, um, the illness of my grandmother. Um, a few years, quite a few years back now, um, she was very ill. And... Um, all through my life, all through my career, she always like pushing me. You need to do gospel, you know. This is what you need to do. Gospel, gospel, gospel until I finally give in when she was ill, as I said. And um, we, we um, did that big one, God is standing by. And um, what can I say? It's history after that pertaining to gospel songs, you know. Indeed. But again, you're, you're a man of many diversity, so gospel was one, but then there were many. Yes, uh, um, yes, because um, what happened is, um, I basically have two names, you know, George Knox and Prince Mohammed. Um, when I recorded early on in my career for Joe Gibbs, um, 
he said that I was too talented to be just one person. So he tried to split me up, you know, saying that you'll name George Knox when you sing and Prince Mohammed when you DJ. So that's what um, that's how that name came along, Prince Mohammed. Um, so up till now, up till today's date, you have a lot of people that um, don't know who really is Prince Mohammed from George Knox, but it's basically the same person, me. Indeed, I was actually going to touch on that. We have Prince Mohammed, we have George Knox, yeah. an artist, a DJ. Mm -hmm. Do you is is that a mental difference to you? Do you set out that this is Prince Mohammed mode or? No, 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 definitely. I just um, in, in staying, I just stay in the, in 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 um music mode, you know. And and I mean, basically, that's where it's at, you know. I don't um say that Prince Mohammed time or George Nook's time. It's just musical time, you know. So um, it, it, it's not difficult for me, definitely. Okay, so you said it was in that era where it was that you needed to be separated between Prince Mohammed and George Knox. But how did the name itself come about? What what chose that name? Yeah, well, well, um, that name, uh, as I was saying, he, he explained to me that you only have two names, but he didn't give me that name right on the spot. What happened was when the song came out, um, me and Culture did a combination. Um, back then we usually called it a Disco Forty Five. Um, my part was the dread no have no fatty leg in I made. Meaning um insect, you know. Um there was a big story that came out that a fatty leg that's what I'd kill a, a, a dreadlocks on the street and, and and my version was it's a lie, you know. Stop spread propaganda because the dread don't have no fatty leg in I made. So I, I, um when I saw that record I saw Prince Mohammed on it, you know. So I'm saying that What's this? Joe Gibbs and he said, remember I told you, you're Prince Mohammed now. So that's what that's where that name came from. Didn't even know, you know, until uh, I saw the record. Okay. And he's never given you a hint as to how he came with that name. That was just it was there, that was you. Yeah, uh, um, basically um what happened was um back then you used to have like a lot of prince, you know, Prince Farai, Prince Hala, Prince a lot of princes. So uh, I guess he just used Mohammed as as something, you know. Indeed, indeed. That's fair, <laughs> enough, fair enough. Your music has always been positive. You know, it's, as you said, you, you're standing out to spread a message. True. Well, well, how would you compare that to some of the other music that you hear out there today? Well, um, basically, um, you know, it's a different generation. Um, there's a, um, there was negative things back then, but now it's more, you know. It's more more of a negative no than, than than it was back then and um to me music shouldn't be like that, you know. Music shouldn't be like that. But as I said it's different generation and, and um things happen just just open and wishing that things will be um you know, they'll come to their senses and and and, and exclude the violence from, 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 from the music, you know. Because that's 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 uh, um, definitely a clash. I mean, music and violence to me don't go together, you know. So um, um, I would definitely um, speak to them about that. Like, you know what I mean? Having them exclude the violence and 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 be a little more moderate, you know. Um, so we could get together. Okay, as you said, with the times changing, artists influence what's happening outside, or they 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 write. They based do. on what's, what's how they're feeling yeah. nowadays what would your message be to possibly an upcoming artist then who potentially has the negativity how would you help that what would your message be for them to find the positivity in such a negative world well um as we know um you have these music that come along nowadays that um really they they um most of the negative one they don't last you know um, you'll hear them for probably a couple of weeks or a month or so and then that's it, you know. Um, I would um, ask them to look at people like Bob Marley, talking about Dennis Brown, Jimmy Cliff, all of them, even me, you know. I do songs from way back 74, 75, 76 and up till now you can have that song played and people think that it's brand new and, and it, it will keep playing forever so we're talking about uh, um, just 
take a, 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 a note out of that book and just try to be as positive as possible you know and leave off the negativity because um it definitely won't last you know so whoever um for the youngsters or even because you have grown people who come in music nowadays you know but um they would know better i think but for the younger generation who is coming into this music and try to be um huge meaning big i mean you know what i mean try to be positive and do the good songs that you know will last you know not things that you'll hear a couple of weeks or a couple of months and then that's it yeah. okay we took hearing of your you say the influences again um the church was an influence for you but you mentioned names like jimmy cliff bob marley who who would you, apart from those who else would be many influences of yours well i used to back then you know um soul you used to have a lot of souls I used to listen um, to um, Aaron Melvin and the Blue Notes, um, you know, the Aretha Franklin, um, the Benny King, and, and Fats Domino, so, such four, you know. We usually listen to all of them, so they, they, they definitely play a part in, 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 in my interest in the music business, you know. Um, as I said, the Bob, the, 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 um, the Alton, and all of them, they definitely, you know, influence me. To do this thing you know okay very interesting very interesting now moving forward we're here in the studio any upcoming tracks that we can look forward to new albums yes um as a matter of fact um we have um two albums supposed to be coming out this year sometime this year hope um hopefully earlier than later um one should be the gospel album and the next one will be the secular as mostly the love songs that people have come to know me for and such forth so um they can definitely look out for them two albums you know um plus um i just did um uh, um i remember mama by shirley caesar in a in a happy way a nice nice song they should listen out for that one you know okay again brilliant looking forward to over the years you've done many many collaborations with many great artists I wouldn't I wouldn't be so difficult and put you on the spot and ask you of a favorite but talking of upcoming artists or artists that are in the game right now in the industry right now is there any artists you have an eye on that you would be interested in working with Yeah quite a few there's a quite a few um um name not coming off right off and but uh, um, I've listened to quite a few and they, they they do have talent some of them do have talent you know so um I guess the next time when I'm when I'm on Ben I let you know <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have good news. George Nooks is enjoying the interview that so much he's promised he's actually going to be back on Ben. <laughs> Talking of that, any upcoming concerts? When's the next time we can expect to see George Nooks in the UK? Um, we'll be in um, the twenty fourth of um, that. That's next Friday, next Saturday, Friday, Saturday. We'll be in um, Luton and um, Manchester. Um, you know, as artists, these. Um, Alls and these banquet and these um, concert halls kind of um, elude me for a while sometimes, but um, you all could check it out on your MySpace or Facebook or such forth and see where I'm, I'm next. Indeed. Okay, as you said, in an artist, many halls, banquets, many shows all over the place. It is difficult and you need reminders all over yes, the place. Yes, yes. What would be one of your favourite countries that you've performed in? Oh, they have quite a lot of them, you know. Um, England is definitely one. Um, these die-hearted fans over here, I mean, like, if um, if you see how they act when they see me, man, I'm like, I'm like very, <laughs> I'm like very humble, you know. They, 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 um, they always enjoy my show to the fullest and I love them for that. And I, I basically travel all over this, we're talking about Europe, the whole Caribbean, um, America, I mean, they always appreciate appreciative of, of, of my, my, um, my singing, my career, and um, I love you all for that, you know, but um, definitely England is one of them places. That's nice to hear, that's nice to hear that. The, the feelings we're sending out is being reciprocated. Yes, 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 yes. I'm going to try and put you on the spot. You said you have two albums coming out, mm -hmm. hopefully this year. Could we get a sneak preview of a track from what either one or both or anything along that line? Okay, well, um, the gospel one. 
I remember mama and the love that she gave. Kneeling by the bedside, I could hear my mama say, The people are depending on you, George. Don't you let them down. I remember mama in a happy way. Thank you, thank you. We have a round of applause because naturally, that is why the UK loves yeah, man. George Nox. You, you, you know, such a powerful voice, such inspiration. So just in case there is, I, I doubt it, but anyone who doesn't know where to find you on the online world, to find out where they can catch you in Manchester or anywhere when you're coming back to the UK, could you just give us your... F ha Facebook. Ah, uh, man. Um, I could be emailed at georgenox3 at yahoo.com. And um, basically, I'm all over the net, you know. So um, you definitely could see me, will, and um, see where I'm going next and such for it, you know. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, ladies and gentlemen, again, I'm stunned, amazed, honoured to be next to such a legend and having him do a, a short acapella for us. So I can only say thank you to you once again, sir. Bless you, love my thank you very much. We Thanks look forward for having. many, many yeah. More albums from you in the future. And thanks for having me on your program, and God bless each and every one of you out there listening or uh, watching whatsoever. Give thanks and stay blessed, all right? Peace out. Yeah. Lifestyle show and Ben. Yeah. Okay, and action. Yeah! Hi, I'm George Knox, and you're watching the Lifestyle Show and Ben. When you have troubles, don't cry. Oh, no, no. Just remember, God is standing by. Yeah, man, stay tuned and don't ever touch that dial here.